Hallelujah. What's up, Peter Bingo's presence? If you have a good Bible, let's open our Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 41. And whoever compels you to go on my go with him too. Let's pray. Father, I just want to thank you for the entrance of your word. It's got the power to transform our lives and destinies. I pray that as the word comes, let it not come with enticing words of men's wisdom. Let it give us an inheritance and let God's people say, Amen. I've titled today's message, Extraordinary People. Every human being was born with a seed of greatness. The ability to unleash this potential is determined by a combination of rational choices and never predicated on chance. The ability to do things is never predicated on chance. Because we are born of God and born of God's spirit. That means there is a power of God in you that can take you to the next level of glory and honor. Sometimes I'm baffled when I meet people and they begin to blame situations and they want to blame other people or they want to blame crisis for their present state. That's wrong. Every man is a product of his most dominant thought. Whatever dominates your mind is going to determine your destiny. Your capacity to rise and to succeed in your highest aspiration will be determined by the quality of choices that you make. Extraordinary people are just ordinary people who decided to go the extra mile. The Bible tells me in the book of Psalm 139, verse 13 to 14, For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I'll praise you, for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. The truth is, if you lack the capacity to know the entirety of your being, if you lack the capacity to define yourself, situations will define you. Do you know who you are? Do you know why you were made? Do you understand your purpose? Extraordinary people have something in common. I'm just going to share seven things they have in common. One, conviction. They have an unwavering conviction of their vision and destiny. With a positive mental attitude towards a desired outcome. They're not tossed to and fro. They're men of conviction. How do you desire to be great when your conviction is very low? What is your dream? What is your vision? What keeps you going? God is not interested by what you drive, but God is interested by what drives you. What drives you? What are your convictions? Nehemiah was upset when he saw the terrible state of Jerusalem. He had a conviction to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. David had a rugged conviction when he saw the state of Israel. The men of Israel gathered for war. And yet, in the midst of the battle, they had lost the battle. They had lost the psychological, lost the spiritual warfare. And Goliath began to determine the cause of the battle. You can't be an extraordinary person when you allow circumstances to determine your destiny. And David showed up. He said, is there not a cause? What are your convictions? A man by the name Nelson Mandela decided to spend 27 years in prison because he had a conviction of a free South Africa where whites and blacks would live in peace and harmony. What is your conviction? You want to change your nation? then you must have a conviction. 
Then two extraordinary people are men and women of courage. They have the audacity to confront odds, reason against their destinies. They don't back down. They fight for a cause greater than self. They strive to make the world a better place. They are fully persuaded, like Apostle Paul, who said, I am fully persuaded. Courage is not the absence of fear, but the capacity to move beyond your fear and standing by faith and claiming, taking hold of eternal promises. That's what courage is all about. Then three, extraordinary people possess commitment. They are committed to the cause they stand for. They're committed to their dreams. Commitment is not showing up today and, and being absent for the next 50 days. That's not commitment. Commitment is standing for your dreams. Commitment is standing on the word of God. Commitment is burning with a passion. Knowing that you have a dream to set your nation free. Knowing that you have a dream to set people free. Knowing that you have a dream to set families free. That's what commitment is all about. Four. They possess character. Extraordinary people are people of extraordinary character, people of tried and tested character. Five, compassion. Extraordinary people exhibit a high degree of compassion. They show empathy to those who are weak. Strength. It's not bullying the weak. Strength is defending the weak. A diamond can never fully be polished without undergoing painful pruning. Therefore, if you desire to be unique, you must allow God to mold you through discipline. Six, charisma. They have the ability to attract people to their cause, and yet they possess the godly character to keep people to that cause. Charisma without character is catastrophic. Then seven, capability. Extraordinary people possess the power of foresight, insight, knowledge, and the ability to do uncommon things through faith and discipline. The Bible tells me in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6 to 7, For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? In other words, whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. Every one of us has been programmed by God to succeed in our highest aspiration. You must live a life greater than self. You must live an intentional life. You are not a product of accident. You were formed for a reason. You were born for a purpose. Use your life to glorify God. Use your life to make the world a better place. Use your life to transform your society. Invest in your spirit. Invest in your mind and invest in your physical body. Because every one of us is not a product of accident. We were born of God's spirit. We're raised for such a time as this. No wonder the psalmist had this to say. 
Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7. And then I said, Behold, I have come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will, O God. Every one of us, we have a divine assignment to fulfill destiny. In the volume of books that God's reading concerning you, some of you were called to become world leaders. In the volume of books that God's written concerning you, some of you were called to transform nations. In the volume of books that God has written concerning you, some of you were called to be world changers, to become the greatest inventors that the world's ever seen before. God has called you to rise up to the needs of the 21st century. Fulfill your destiny. The greatest tragedy in life is not death but the life lived without purpose. Those considered extraordinary people were ordinary men and women of courage and purpose who broke free from the average norms of society going the extra mile to achieve great feats. All the wonders you seek lies within you. The ability to come out with the greatest invention lies in you. There is a power of God in you, for you. To do uncommon things. You know, sometimes I'm baffled when people tell me that, you know, I want to do things. But you see, the situation is not just right. If it's not now, when? You can't achieve big things by thinking small. You must step out of your comfort zone. You must know that life is a race. It favors those who have faith. It favors those who have the audacity to dream big dreams. Don't just exist. Live for a cause bigger than you. When you make it all about self, then you're not far from the thresholds of selfishness. The Bible tells me in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. For there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you're going. What is that dream? What is that thing you want to pursue? If you know you're called to pray, pray. If you know you're called to do praise and worship, do it well. If you know you're called to manage, manage well. If you know you're called to be a pastor, be the best pastor. If you know you're called to be a manager, be the best manager. Whatever you're called to do, do it with all your might. And write your name in the sands of time for God's glory. Proverbs chapter 22 Verse 29, do you see a man who excels in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. The spirit of excellence is the spirit of Christ. The spirit you carry is the spirit of excellence. Don't be a mediocre. A mediocre is the best of the worst and the worst of the best. Do something that's never been done before. Revelation chapter 2, verse 26. And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end to him, I'll give power over the nations. You want to become a woman or a man of transformation, then you must know how to endure to the end. Disobedience, fear. And ignorance are the worst enemies of divine purpose. Fearful individuals are the most self-centered people. They live only for themselves and for no one else. Until you live for a cause bigger than self, you have not lived at all. You merely existed. There's something about righteousness that gives us the audacity of faith. There's something about righteousness that gives us the audacity of courage. There's something about righteousness that gives us the ability to do uncommon things. I want to see Asia. I want to see Africa. I want to see Europe. I want to see South and North America. I want to see Australia. I want to see Antarctica free in my time. I want righteousness to flow like an ever-flowing stream. But it takes courage to achieve this. The Bible tells me in the book of Proverbs 28 verse 1, The wicked flee when no one pursues, 
but the righteous are bold as a lion. There is a difference between boldness and timidity. The Bible tells me that God has not given us a spirit of fear, neither has he given us a spirit of timidity, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. Extraordinary people are bold. Proverbs 29 verse 25 tells me the fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. You can't say you want to be a man or woman that will be used to transform nations when you easily give in to public opinion. There is a difference between peacekeepers and peacemakers. The Bible tells me that blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Godly peace, the mission of peacemakers is predicated on righteousness, godliness, and the knowledge and fear of God. They want peace, but only the peace that's tied to God's purpose and God's power and God's agenda. But peacekeepers will do anything, including disobeying God, just to achieve peace. That type of peace is stupid peace, foolish peace, based on the wrong foundation. There's something unique about extraordinary people. They are meek people. They're meek. You know, one is meekness. The Bible tells me that blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Meekness simply means you have all the power to punish, yet you refuse to, to be a tyrant. You have all the ability to punish the strength. Possessing self-control in midst of so much power is called meekness. Possessing self-mastery in midst of so much power is called meekness. Meekness is not weakness. Tyranny is weakness. Humility is strength. There's a difference between godly leadership and the leadership of tyrants. In godly leadership, we appeal to the souls of men. And they follow not because they fear. They follow because they believe in what we do. There's a difference. If you say you're a leader, empower people and free them. If they follow you in that freedom, that means you're still a leader. Matthew chapter 23, verse 11 to 12. But he who is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Matthew eleven twelve. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. We don't negotiate the kingdom. We implement the kingdom agenda. We don't negotiate our spiritual convictions with demons and principalities and powers. We enforce it. Because the kingdom of God is not in words but in power. When we say thy kingdom come, it's a declaration of war against ungodliness, against corruption, against crime and criminality. That is what thy kingdom is. Come means. It means there's a new sheriff in town. That means everything has to change. That means darkness has to flee. That means light has come. That means corruption bows to righteousness. That means everything has to be turned upside down to glorify God. The Bible tells me that when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Righteousness is a mission. And we have been empowered to enthrone righteousness. There is no page in God's plan that suggests that believers should live like ordinary people. 
who were ordained to occupy the best positions in every spectrum of life. To achieve this, you must minimize your fears and maximize your giving potentials for breakthroughs. You cannot achieve greatness by thinking and doing small things. Go beyond the ordinary and do what no man has ever done. The Bible tells me in the book of 1 Corinthians 2, 9, But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. That means the things God has in store for you, no one's ever seen it yet. But do you believe? 2 Timothy 2, 20 to 21, But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. We are all in this great house, the house of God. So the type of vessel you want to be is no longer in God's hands. It's all going to be the end product of the choices that you're going to make. You know, success or failure does not just happen overnight. It's a combination of the right or wrong choices we've made over a period of time. Greatness is within reach. But how much do you want greatness? Power is within reach. How much do you want it? Success is within reach. How much do you want it? The Bible tells me in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 13. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not be beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you today and are careful to observe them. There is nothing in God's plan that suggests that you are going to be beneath. So the question is, if God has called us to be above only, why are some people down? It's because they chose to. Not because God wants you to be in that place. You must get tired of being broke. You must get tired of being sick. You must get tired of being inconsequential. It's your time. It's your choice. It's your prerogative. There's nothing in the Bible that tells me that we were called to live ordinary life. There's nothing in the Bible that tells me that we were called to live an average life. The Bible tells me he that comes from above is above all. I speak into someone's destiny that from this day you will walk with a spirit of wisdom. You will walk with a spirit of power. You will walk with a spirit of excellence. You shall be the head and not the tail in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible tells me in the book of Exodus chapter 19, verse 4 to 6, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. How much do you want to succeed? It's all in your hands. Understanding who you are and what you are called to do on earth is the key to unlocking the potentials and discovering your purpose. Jeremiah 29, 11 to 13. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I'll listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. The reason some people are not getting the exact result they want is because you can't walk with God holding hands with the devil. You can't limp with two different opinions. It's either you believe in faith or you don't. It's either you believe in righteousness that comes through Christ Jesus or you don't. Make up your mind. 
You can't walk in the light and walk with the light and embrace the principles of darkness. Job chapter 13, verse 1 to 2. Behold, my eye has seen all this. My ears has heard and understood it. What you know, I also know. I am not inferior to you. Tell your neighbor, say, I am not inferior to you. There is no one that God has made that was made or labeled inferior. Irrespective of the race you came from, it is my personal belief that greatness is not determined by racial segregation. Greatness is determined by how much you believe. No one is too young or old to be used by God to achieve extraordinary things. Never allow excuses to deprive you of your godly inheritance. Be bold. Live an intentional life. Step out of your comfort zone and fulfill your destiny. How old was Josiah when he began to reign? He was just eight years old. And he carried out one of the greatest reforms that Israel's ever known. The Bible tells me in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 34, verse 1 to 3, Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in the ways of his father, David. He did not turn aside to the right or to the left. For in the eight year of his reign, while he was still young, he began to seek the God of his father, David, and in the twelfth year, he began to pour Judah and Jerusalem of the high places, the wooden images, the carved images, and the molded images. I speak to everyone under the influence of the sound of my voice. You are never too young to do the right thing. As long as you're born of God's spirit, it is your time to change the society. It's your time to change the community is your time to transform the destinies of nations. Joshua chapter 14, verse 10 to 13. Caleb was a man who loved God. He loved God and he did extraordinary things even as an old man. And he, his testimony. And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive as he said. These 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses, while Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now here I am, this day, 85 years old. As yet, I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me, just as my strength was then. So now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, as an inheritance. Hallelujah. This was a testimony of Caleb. He said, while I was still young, the same fire I carried, the same zeal I had for God, the same way I evangelized, the same way I carried out strength, I did supernatural things, I am still that person. I know 45 years has gone when God spoke that we should take this. No one got the job done because this is a mountain and a mountain terrain is a strong place. Only the strong, only extraordinary people can take it. But I can take it at the age of 85. I still want to go. I don't know what it is you're looking for, but I came to challenge you. It is never too late to do the right thing. If you are there caught up in the mystery of failure, caught up in the circle of failure, caught up with frustration, I can speak fairly and I can speak that with God, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Rise up from your failure. Rise up from your disappointment. Rise up from your pain. 
It is time to pray until something happens. It is time to pray until you dethrone principalities and powers. It is time to pray until your dreams are realized. Don't stop until righteousness flows like an ever-flowing stream. Don't stop until nations are transformed. Don't stop until this pandemic is destroyed. Don't stop until the sick are healed. Don't stop until the deaf heal. Don't stop until the cripples walk. Pray until something happens. Everyone under the influence of the sound of my voice, shake off this frustration. Shake off all the things that held you down. Don't get cold. Quench not the spirit. Rise up because we are in a warfare. Only the strong can survive. Rise up because we are in a warfare. Only the weak are going to be destroyed. Rise up because we are in a warfare. Only men who know God shall do great exploits. Rise up because if you can believe, you can receive. The Bible tells me if anyone tells this mountain and you do not doubt in your spirit, if you believe this mountain shall be removed, I speak to the mountain of sickness. I speak to the mountain of poverty. I speak to the mountain and every yoke in your destiny. I break the stronghold of sickness. I break the stronghold of death. I break the stronghold of poverty. And I declare that by the stripes of Jesus, you have been made whole. Arise and shine for the glory of God is risen upon you. Today, in the name that's above every other name, I declare you extraordinary men and women, men of signs and wonders, women of signs and wonders. You shall possess the land. You shall move from glory to glory, from strength to strength. No weapon of the enemy fashioned against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against you shall be condemned. They shall come against you in one way and disperse in seven different ways. Arise and shine, for victory belongs to you. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. And for those of you watching us online, and you're wondering, I've heard your message, man of God. I don't want to be an ordinary person. The first step towards becoming an extraordinary person is to bring the extra factor into your life, which is Christ, the hope of glory. If you want to do that, say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I know you're the son of God. You died to set me free. With my heart, I believe, and with my mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I surrender my spirit, soul, and body, and I invite you to become my personal Lord and Savior, even as you've cleansed me from all unrighteousness. If you've just prayed that prayer, I want to welcome you to God's kingdom, the greatest kingdom upon the face of the earth. If you want to contact us, contact us with the address on the screen below. See you online or in church next Sunday. God bless you.